Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the three amigos. How you guys doing? Did how you doing, Matt? Super awesome. I'm excited for this product review. There you go. And Dion, how are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm actually I'm actually glad we're talking about this because this is uh, it's a question I get often on specifically what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. So I, in full disclosure, I am cheating. I am uh, creating a new, probably a whole brand new playlist, copying what the lumberjack is doing. But I'm adding my little special twist. We're going to get a second review on a different product. So we're going to get experience from two gentlemen who do self-management uh, because I don't have to make these decisions, which frankly, I love. But a lot of you do do a lot of self-management. And one of the key things today is uh, what do you do with your door locks, right? What do you, how do you change them? What's going on? So we, we're going to do a product review of two different products. Uh, we'll go to the Lumberjack first, since you are the inspiration for this. You did your first product review yesterday, which was amazing, I heard. So what do you got? We'll pull it up. Uh, you'll talk about it. And then I'll actually show folks on Amazon what it looks like. So this was the first one that we did. And this is the Quick Set Digital Keypad. Okay. And so for those that self-manage, there have been a number of occasions where you have gone to the property, didn't have the key, mm -hmm. oh, where, you had, where you had the key, but it was at your house and you weren't at your house, yep. where somebody needed to gain access, but the key wasn't there. Just look at the fake dog poo on the ground. There's yep. a bunch of dog poo on the ground. I can't tell which one's <laughs> fake. And then the fourth one, which is, hey, I locked my keys. I can't, I don't, I can't find my keys and I need to get in my apartment. Well, guess what? No matter how much you know it's the tenant's fault that they can't get back in their apartment, you're still on the hook to get them back in. Yeah. So that's why we started standardizing on these locks probably six or actually we probably started with other locks about eight years ago. Okay. And then these came out about four or five years ago. Mm. And so every time a new lock would hit the market, we wanted to find something that was stable, that was good, that was reliable, that didn't burn through batteries mm -hmm. um, and wasn't a problem to easily code. You know, okay. because installing this, so my kids and I, because we are sick and twisted, we actually, when we need to go put one of these new ones on a new property, we actually have Ashley do it. And then we time her in the car and we scream at her. <laughs> Come on. We're just like, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. It's going to be longer than 10 minutes. You're not going to make it. So, so she, again, I, she takes one off. Yep. So like an old key and. Yep. Yep, accesses via the key and then literally goes inside the house. Yep, screws, takes off the screws, screws out the back screws, takes off the piece, takes off the up. center mechanism. Yep. And then installs this and then codes it. And there, and the cool thing about coding these is that you can code them with a primary and a backup number for you, a primary and a backup number for a tenant. And you can also do what are called burn codes. Burn codes are awesome because you can put like five burn codes in here where somebody uses it once. Gone. And then once they shut the door, it's gone. Interesting. So the burn code is very simple. So I can tell you my bill to locksmiths yeah. and my bill to tenants at the end of the year when they don't give me their keys back, yeah. that used to be thousands of dollars that I had to go chase, take care of, make new copies, blah, blah, blah. They don't even get the set of keys to this. Ah, there you Only, go. I don't give them keys at all. No key. So when this thing starts blinking red, I just say, go into your drawer in your kitchen. I left your batteries, swap them out. And again, that's one screw. Yeah. It's so the, uh, the, it's actually for changing the batteries in this, it's zero screws. Oh, so it's just a really pop the top off. Pop off. Wow. Super simple. All right. So let's show that. Um, so that is. Yeah. Michael have a link on this video. I have one on my more depth, uh, more depth descript uh, descriptive one, but you can get it at either one. Yeah. Okay. So it's funny you bring this up because you're right. Because again, we do have keys on some of our apartments still. Our houses may have codes. I have to ask. But yeah, I mean, every year it's amazing. Locksmiths, even yeah. just changing locks at turnover. Yeah, right? it's crazy. It, yeah. And so the last thing real quickly on this one, the other thing that I also love about this particular product is that it gives you a two phase commit. And so Mike probably knows what that means being in the tech world, but not being in the tech world, here's what that basically means. It gives you a screen. It shows you three numbers. You have to hit those three numbers to then have it bring up the entire keypad that you then enter your code. Got it. That way nobody can come and look. And if your number is four, five, four, five, no one's going to look and see those are the only two digits that are ever touched. Right. So that way you actually have, and those numbers on that front screen constantly shift and change. So you're never going to have a keypad that looks like 
it's only use those numbers and those numbers are going to get worn out. I love that. All right. Well, very cool. One thing we're doing on here is we're doing product reviews, two different locks. So Dion, why the hell don't you use that? Oh, that sounds pretty good. I don't, I don't know why you would not use that lock. I mean, Jesus Christ. So a couple of things to touch on, on, on why it's a good idea to have the coded locks. My, Matt, you invest kind of like me and see you maybe some more B areas, right? We're not super high end and we're not in a war yeah. zone. Yeah. My tenants are all class C. There's one maybe class B minus, but they're excited about not having keys. Yeah. And, and like you, I'm excited about not having to give them keys. <laughs> I, I've never had a lockout. And the main reason when you do coded locks like this is, is rentals have two exterior doors. Mm -hmm. So you put in two, one door is primarily used more often. Sure. So it, that battery will be the one that dies first. So if it ever does actually just die and they can't get in that door, they go to the other one. Yeah. Go to the back door. Exactly. So, so, so the lock that I use, I don't have a sample of here like Matt does. Um, but Mike, you have a link if you could pull it up and I'm going to okay. show if your price point is really what matters and Matt hasn't had any issues with his. So the quick set is probably the way to go if price point is all that matters. So if so, you look So what here, you're saying is Matt is cheap is what I just heard you say. Well, and then he provides batteries for the tenants, which I don't do, so I'm cheap. Okay. But <laughs> I use this Schlag coded lock. And the main difference with mine is you enter the code mm -hmm. and then you see how that has a dial. Mm -hmm. The human engages the lock and disengages the lock. If you look at Matt's mic, if you'll click over. Yeah, sure. That's interesting. Yep. You click on that. There is no way for you to engage or disengage the lock. So a motor pushes out the bolt and yep. retracts the bolt, yes. which makes the batteries last a little bit less. I've had batteries and locks last over three years. Yep. I have it in the lease that tenants will replace them every year, but they don't. Mm -hmm. And I, I have the one in mine, which I've been in since January, 2020, has right. the same battery. So I've never had battery issues. The other problem is, um, and here's a little overshare. Hmm. Not only do I live in the unit of my fourplex, but I house hack a room in my unit. Oh, wow. And what, that's a young couple that rents the other room. And the girl has a low body temperature. So not a lot of good blood flow in colder days. Hmm. So a quick set like this, your temperature pushes the key. It's not a physical key that you're depressing. Hmm. So if you're in an area that's often cold and you have tenants who have low body temperature or like to wear gloves, this might not be the best option. If you go over to mine again, Mike, these are physical buttons that you depress. And so your body temperature isn't, you know, isn't a factor in whether this is going to work or not. Yeah. So, this, this is actually what Olivia or one like this a different. I actually have to check. This is what we have at our condo at home is a keypad like this. And again, we physically engage the lock. Mm -hmm. which makes the battery last a very like years. We use this at every one of our campuses at our truck driving school. Mm. Um, they're, they're both viable. They both work. I oh, would yeah. say, you know, try one or two out and see which one you like the best. Uh, yeah. And what I do, here's, a, here's an actual trick to learn how shopping on Amazon works. Okay. You, the person watching this video, yep. go to the link down below in this video that Mike puts up and he'll pin a comment. Click on the link to look at one of these locks and then wait four hours. <laughs> you are going to get an email saying, look at the sale and I buy these locks for 89 to $94. After I've looked at them four hours later, you get the email. So either one of these locks might actually get a, a, an increase, a decrease in cost. If you look at it, let it get a cookie saying, that's what you're looking at. Yeah. And then wait for the email to show up saying, here's a deal on what you were looking at. Yeah. And that's pretty much everything you wanna buy on Amazon works that way. Yeah, I have a question for Matt on this yeah. one. Sure. So again, I, I don't know about your units. I'm sure you have one of these, right? Sometimes when you engage the deadbolt, it doesn't go in as cleanly as you would expect, mm -hmm. right? It kind of catches an edge. Yep. Given this is motor driven, what happened? I don't have no idea what happens. Does it try again? Does it make a noise? How, how do you yeah. know it? So cleans? usually, so you'll hear it cycle three times. And then when it cycle after it cycles three times, it'll blink, blink, blink. And but, so, but okay. But again, I'm a tenant. Yep. who's used to this they push the button turn around walk away because it takes us two, like two seconds right you the, hear it you hear it it's like a millis it's like a millisecond You'll okay. and, it, and it clicks yeah. really loud it, it goes does. click 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 because it's trying to engage it so it, it right. they, they have that feature and they have an audio okay good i don't know because i know like my office door when i'm talking to you I'm, the deadbolt doesn't always engage yeah one thing about um I know something about that with kids. Yes, I understand that. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. The door is not completely shut. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that's the thing is with this one. So when we put them in, we make sure that you're not having, like, we'll do a door adjustment. We're making sure you're not having to push in the door. Yeah. The door ajar a little bit. So there's air getting in there. Yeah. 
like that's sometimes sometimes we have to tweak the door a little bit okay but that's just be, that's the house that's not the yeah, it's the house is not the lock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, real, yeah real quickly though on dion's if you can bring it up i'll actually show you guys something too yep so make sure that if you're buying a lock like this with a physical mechanism make sure it's only going to be a schlag or better yeah. Because that physical piece wears out in like, I think it's the defiance. We had the defiance. They were the same exact design. Mm -hmm. After two or three years, they were wearing out where the yeah. spin wouldn't mm -hmm. engage. Yeah. And so people couldn't get into the house. And I was- Once it spins, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Once it spins and it won't grip, you're like, you're done. done. So yeah. that's actually what was, we use those, we use what we call the physical turn, keypad with physical turn. We use these for a number of years and got away from them because we kept on getting crushed after, you know, three years, four years. If I have to replace a $75 lock every three or four years, yeah. I might as well have keys because yeah, those, no, cost, exactly. those cost me 16 bucks. Yeah, no, you're right. So just, I think the Schlag are fine. The one, like I said, the brand that we were using was the Defiant, but that's, that cylinder just spins because what it's literally doing is when you hit the code, yeah. it's actually engaging, engaging the cylinder. Teeth. Yeah, correct. Teeth, and yeah. if it doesn't do that, and that's where the challenge can be. And it can be something as simple as it's tweaked a little bit off and it's stuck and it can't get back oh, in. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Forget it. Done. Yeah. So I suggest that to people watching, whether you get Matt's version or my version, they have $20 coded locks on amazon yes if you yeah. want a problem every two months yes don't grab some of those yeah, yeah. no so to be you get fair what you pay for to be fair dion saw a lock that we also use and he's like that's crap and i was like okay and so here's the thing there are versions of that lock that are garbage yeah this particular one good so whatever you do don't short change i think where dion and i come in on this is yeah. that we've spent years deploying these and the record speaks for itself. I'm not talking about any product that I haven't used in multiple rentals for mm -hmm. multiple time with heavy traffic. And keep in mind, my units are normally five and six bedrooms. So it's five and six people every day coming and going to work, all this other stuff. And you have real weather, right? We're talking not just rain, like we, yeah. Seattle. So, you have snow and all that. Yeah. So these are rated. So these are rated for minus four Fahrenheit. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And so it can be like wind chill doesn't really count, but minus yeah. four Fahrenheit, it's not, and yeah. they still work, but you'll actually hear it like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. For sure. Well, this has been a lot of fun, folks. Do me, do us a favor, leave comments below if you use one of them, leave, leave a comment below if you're going to try one. We'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you guys think about these product reviews. And you know what? I've got two experts here. If you have another product you want us to review, ask us. I probably will have no opinion because I pay a property manager. But I have two friends that will like to debate. So this is a lot of fun. Uh, Matt, where can people find you? Plumber Jack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram and on live stream 1130 a.m. Sundays, Eastern Time. Awesome. And Dion? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. I do my live streams on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Ciao.